Hello, good morning. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Saturday the 21st of May. Commemoration of Helena and uh, <coughs> morning prayer Easter season, otherwise Church of England's common worship. You will find the words in the eponymously titled book towards the beginning in the seasonal section after prayer during the day and uh, online at the Church of England's website under Remus Daily Prayer. And one may download the words for Apple or Android devices on the appropriate app. If you want to join me, I'm here in the building, 8 and 6 every day. I'm not in on Mondays, but my colleague Ginny will be started in a week or two. On Sundays, tomorrow, I will do traditional communion at 8 in the morning and said even song with hymns in the evening. But otherwise, it's this throughout the day, throughout the day, throughout the week. The Zoom codes are on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're streaming on the latter, and I will upload the audio onto my Dominic Dobel YouTube channel in about an hour's time. I'll just settle the dog down. One moment. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The Easter Anthems. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all. In living he lives to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. The Psalms are at the back of the book, or you find them by scrolling on. Those appointed this morning are numbers 146 and 150. We open and close with the refrains. We say the glory be between the last verse and our repeating of it. We'll pause to read the prayers and use them as we see fit. Um, and we'll read Psalms 146 and 150. Straight through, you're welcome to listen to it all, read it all, or just read the even-numbered verses as we make our way, as if we were doing it uh, audibly, uh, that others might hear the whole, in which case I wouldn't read the evens, and you would. 146 and 150. The Lord shall reign forever. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. As long as I have any being, I will sing praises to my God. Put not your trust in princes, nor in any human power, for there is no help in them. When their breath goes forth, they return to the earth. On that day all their thoughts perish. 
Happy are those who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps his promise for ever, who gives justice to those that suffer wrong, and bread to those who hunger. The Lord looses those that are bound, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down, the Lord loves the righteous, the Lord watches over the stranger in the land, he upholds the orphan and widow, but the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign for ever, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord shall reign for ever. <clears throat> Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Alleluia. O praise God in his holiness. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with a blast of the trumpet. Praise him upon the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dances. Praise him upon the strings and pipe. Praise him with ringing cymbals. Praise him upon the clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So we scroll past our first reading to the Song of Moses and Miriam. We'll turn back to morning prayer during Easter season in the book to the same, and we'll read it as we did the psalm. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. <clears throat> at the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed, and by your invincible strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. From Kindle Edition of Celebrating a Saint, the Empress Helena came to power in the Roman Empire when her son Constantine became emperor in the year 306. Although she had previously been abandoned by her husband, her son raised her to a position of great honour. As Helena was a Christian, she gave her support to their cause, and in 326 she made a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. There she provided the wherewithal to found the building of a basilica on the Mount of Olives and another at Bethlehem. According to 4th century historians, she discovered the cross on which Christ was crucified. In the Eastern Church, she is commemorated on this day, together with her son, Constantine. Constantine. Our first Bible reading is Numbers 14 from 26. So if you're using a Bible, you will need to turn to the beginning. And uh, four books in, after Genesis, you will find Numbers. (coughs) You're looking for the large number 14 uh, at the head of the paragraph. That's chapter 14. And the small numbers in the text from 26. Numbers 14 verse 26. It's also provided towards immediately before the canticle. Numbers 14 from 26. And the Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, 
saying, How long shall this wicked congregation complain against me? I have heard the complaints of the Israelites, which they complain against me. Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, I will do to you the very things that I heard you say your dead heard you say. Your dead bodies shall fall in this very wilderness, and all of your number, included in the census, from twenty years old and upwards, you have complained against me. Not one of you shall come into the land in which I swore to settle you, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. But your little ones, who you said would become booty, I will bring in, and they shall know the land that you have despised. But as for you, your dead bodies shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall be shepherds in the wilderness for forty years, and shall suffer for your faithlessness, until the last of your dead bodies lies in the wilderness. According to the number of the days in which you spied out the land, forty days for every year you shall bear your iniquity, forty years, and you shall know my displeasure. I, the Lord, have spoken. Surely I will do this to all this wicked congregation gathered together against me in this wilderness. They shall come to a full end, and there they shall die. And the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land, who returned and made all the congregation complain against them by bringing a bad report about the land. The men who brought an unfavourable report about the land died by a plague before the Lord. But Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, alone remained alive with those men who went to spy out the land. <coughs> When Moses told these words to all the Israelites, the people mourned greatly. They rose early in the morning and went to the heights of the hill country, saying, Here we are, we will go up to the place that the Lord has promised, for we have sinned. But Moses said, Why do you continue to transgress the command of the Lord? That will not succeed. Do not go up, for the Lord is not with you. Do not let yourselves be struck down before your enemies, for the Amalekites and the Canaanites will confront you there, and you shall fall by the sword, because you have turned back from following the Lord. The Lord will not be with you. But they presumed to go up to the heights of the hill country, even though the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and Moses had not left the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who lived in that hill country came down and defeated them, pursuing them as far as Hormah. <coughs> so we've been reading Deuteronomy with a almost sort of parallel account. Here we have the Numbers uh, version, where... God's people were about to fulfil the promise that God had established for them, but they decided it was going to be too hard, and so they didn't. And so then they got to sort of go round the houses, take the scenic route, hang around for a bit. And those that said it would be too difficult for God to achieve uh, are going to die in the wilderness, like they said they were going to. And their children were going to the promised land in the end. So God's will will be fulfilled. And uh, the spies who thought it was going to be too hard died of plague. And when Moses told the people, they said, well, we'll go anyway. And he said, no, you won't, because God isn't with you. And he and the covenant remained in the camp. They had a go uh, and were defeated. And they said that these people were too strong for them, but they didn't believe in God. And uh, then they decided they could go on their own. <clears throat> and they were defeated. And so it is worth us considering whether God is with us in our project or our plan. As we, as Anglicans, especially look for God's revelation in scripture, tradition and reason. And we balance out the, the calling, the idea, the looking for where God is in mission and ministry and engaging with it. And uh, if we are where God is and we abide in God and God abides in us, then things will go well. And those things that are arraigned against us will be overcome or defeated or healed or restored. But if we go in our own strength, we will come to a loss. If we don't believe in God, we will not make progress. May that be a salutary lesson for all of us. <clears throat> and uh, may Moses pray for those of us in leadership who endeavour to make that connection between um, <clears throat> God and God's people in that intercession role. Luke 6 from 12, our second Bible reading. Luke is the third of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So two thirds of the Bible. Two thirds of the way through, you open it, you get to the second covenant. If you've got a um, Jewish and Greek scripture Bible in front of you, we're looking for the large number six this time. Chapter six, Luke chapter six, and the verses now are 12 to 26. So they're the small numbers amongst the text, the first numbers, 12 to 26. Luke 6, 12 from 12 uh, is also available online immediately after the canticle we read a moment ago. Jesus went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when the day came, he called his disciples and chose twelve of them, whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, Judas Iscariot, he became a traitor. 
He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. <coughs> Interesting to note that Jesus prays, it says, all night before he calls his people. And may we, as we um, promote people's calling and ministry, do so prayerfully. <coughs> he, we have a list of the 12, <coughs> and uh, that list is slightly different than some of the Gospels, but they're always the 12, and that is the validating mark of the Gospels as the apostles were dying. The Gospels were written after the letters, before Revelation, the Johannine material. But uh, to see the twelve spoken of and listed reassures us that this is genuine, authentic, original. And we've got their names. We're then told that he speaks to a great crowd of disciples and a multitude of people. I did a men's breakfast talk once on these concentric circles of descriptions of numbers of people. And uh, the disciples sometimes mean the twelve. Here we are told that the twelve are called apostles, <clears throat> but Paul counts himself as an apostle. So these terms are fairly flexible. And then within the crowd of twelve, he had his best mate, John, and that uh, set of three or four who went with him to those special occasions like Transfiguration. And then there were crowds, and then there were sort of the crowds of the peoples. So... Uh, I guess it's for us to decide how committed, how involved we are with God as to how much we get back. For the more you give, um, the more we will be returned to you. Press down together, shaken, run together, running over. And we've got people here, local and from far away, uh, from foreign places, Tyre and Sidon, coming and hearing. And people simply have to touch him. And uh, power comes out and heals, just as the woman with the issue of blood touched his clothes and she was healed so we just have to touch according to luke <clears throat> touch that glory we don't need to understand it we don't need to talk to it i guess it's a bit like going and sitting in a church and finding peace going away and being healed just thinking just reaching out in that direction and god's grace will come back to us there's no talk of having enough faith to be healed here as there are in some of the miraculous accounts and then we go on to Luke's version <coughs> of the um, Beatitudes those who are poor will be rich those who are rich will become poor and if we are being persecuted for our faith then we should rejoice if we are being honoured we should be careful because that's what's happened to the false prophets so it's a sort of a proper, just don't be fooled by uh, what is going on at the moment. Seek the truth behind that. <coughs> and uh, in many ways, those people who, have en who engage with people who are poor um, in their town, village, city, overseas, in many respects, although people lack some aspects of what it means to be human, they may well have a great treasure of other um, aspects of what it means to be human. We have a community larder here, and one of the things I like about it is that it's shared venue, uh, venture between the church whose building is being used and the um, volunteer centre who provide drivers for people to get to hospital and the like, <clears throat> to other appointments. And uh, it's not a top-down charity it's an opportunity for people to share, and it grew out of people sharing their um, Boris boxes. <clears throat> and so there might be somebody who comes one day 
and uh, gives and somebody else who comes the next day and receives. Somebody might produce some potatoes and somebody might go away and turn it into potato salad. Somebody might come and talk. That might just be what somebody wants and uh, it's a, a real blessing. So we pray God's blessing on all involved and those who contribute and receive from it at whatever level, as volunteers, as trustees. To the responsory back in morning prayer in Easter season. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? The song of Zechariah. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Source of the Sabbath, heir of peace, comforter, advocate. Three in one, one in three. At the beginning of this day of rest and peace, we pray that we would be peaceable. That we would recognise your provision. You're hedging us round. You're going before us. You're providing a table in the presence of those challenges that we face daily. That we, if we consider ourselves to be poor in any aspect or area of our lives, be encouraged by our readings today that we will be fulfilled and fruitful. We pray for those for whom today will be a challenge, those who are seeking to escape bombing, persecution, for being a woman, for their ethnicity, for their faith, for standing up for justice, perhaps amongst tribal peoples who are, some of whom I guess as yet are still undiscovered in some of those vast forests being destroyed, that we may feed our livestock in the extensive, rather in the intensive global animal production systems, which are a bit mad, which I would disagree. I'm a fan of local, small-scale, extensive pastoral livestock as they promote biodiversity rather than destroy it. We pray for those whose uh, relationships are violent, those who've been trafficked, those without decent terms and conditions, those whose pressures of work mean that they're spilling over today, those who work on shifts, for whom Saturday is not a day of rest, those in the military, those in the utilities, those in prison, in the hospital. We ask that you cover them with your wings, breathe your peace, and that all those who work for peace will be successful in their endeavours, whatever their faith, whatever their philosophy, whatever their organisation. International Fellowship of Evangelical Students. COVID has exacerbated existing economic, practical and social challenges to student ministry in Latin America or South America. <coughs> Many movements have struggled to meet because of, even online, because of infrastructure. 50% <coughs> have had to invest in reconnecting with students as the natural connections built through fellowship have been strained by online meetings and inability to travel and even for student leaders to meet 
and disciple younger students. Pray for wisdom and inspiration as they rebuild. From Christian Action Research and Education, God of Justice, we ask the victims of modern slavery will not be unfairly impacted by the National and Borders Bill. Rather, we ask that the bill would result in increased support and security for individuals as they recover. We pray for those who are to be deported and those who thought they were British but find their documentation, which they told they didn't need, and therefore has been denied them, are at risk. We pray that we will once again become a country that, uh, following our psalm reading and instruction in the Hebrew Scriptures, is one of openness and welcome to the other, that we may not be punished for our pride and bigotry. We pray the same for other nations, thinking of the Holy Land too, where people are oppressed by others who arguably might well know better. We pray for security of all peoples and religions who share a common heritage in that part of the world. We pray that the British government today will take more of an interest as a result of previous British government's involvement in that situation. From Green Christian, England's largest ever seagrass restoration project has reached a new milestone, planting 70,000 seed bags over three and a half hectares of seabed, providing vital habitat for marine life. Two and a half million life recreation, R-E-M-E-D-I-E-S, partnership to save our seabed, led by Natural England, funded by EU Life Programme, was launched in 2019, seeking to protect and restore seabed habitats at risk. <clears throat> we thank you for that. In our benefit cycle of prayer, we pray for our elected representatives, and so we do, asking that you will give them wisdom, perseverance, and on this day of rest, rest. Um, and uh, we pray they will recognise not only their own integrity, but where they have faith, that that assistance helps them, but also they man manage to balance that against the needs of their constituents and their party's call to uh, side with the overall drive of their party. And we pray they might be able to balance all of those in their work and that they might be able to see that they can make a difference, they do make a difference for the people that they are elected to serve. We pray especially for our town council that they'd be inspired and energised to stand hopefully for a future that is vibrant, creative, sustainable, hospitable, in this place. We thank you for our um, people in and around this benefice or these benefices. Praying today for our ministers, Janet, Eileen, John, Malcolm, Robert, Alison, Jason, Margaret as elders, Diana, our reader, Vic, David, Anna, Jonathan as honorary associate priests, Linda and Alison, assistant curates, Ginny, team vicar. Me as Team Rector, we thank you for our individual callings and our hopes and aspirations, our particular um, interests and gifts and abilities. And uh, we pray that you continue to draw others into service in this way and uh, enable us to find where you are and engage with that, that your rule may be established and that you may be worthily worshipped by those who are being moved from glory to glory. We thank you, you'll be faithful to complete the good work you have begun in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tell 
The collect for Easter from the book, God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Run us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Good night, ladies, joining us on YouTube.